Welcome to the Motorhome Matt podcast brought to you with That Leisure Shop. Com. I'm Keith Gooden, and here is our expert of experts, the man the show is named after. It's Matt Sims. Woohoo! Here I am. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> In the next couple of uh, episodes, uh, this one and the next one, we're going to be uh, looking at new products and some of the people uh, we talked to at the big NEC show. We did. What a great week it was. It was fantastic. Uh, over 40 interviews, I understand. Yeah, we did. We were busy, very busy. Absolutely fantastic, as I've said before, and brought to you, of course, with our friends at Avtex, Kabunk, our friends at Creative Funding Solutions, sponsored also by Maypole, Total, the Ethicurian Restaurant, and Van Love Fest. Brilliant. Thank you all ever so much. It was great to have you on board. Great to have your branding presence with us in the atrium. Did you see it? Do you see the big banner? I saw the big banner. It was, I'm a, I'm a fan of the banner. <laughs> Oh, how do you come up with this stuff? I dream it. 40 years in radio. Who would believe it? <laughs> 39 of them completely wasted. There's a long paper round. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> what a fantastic time we had. Gosh, what a great week, wasn't it? It was good. What did you make of it, though? Because obviously this is, this is all new for you, isn't it? I keep forgetting this because your first foray into motorhomes was a year ago when we started this podcast. It's been a year. Can you believe that? I can't believe how big, shiny and expensive they all are. And I also think that the inventions to put in them, you know, bolt in them, screw in them, uh, to help you on your holidays are just absolutely fantastic. There's some real innovation and uh, great scientific thought gone into things. I mean, mm. you can have anything, can't you? Almost, almost. <laughs> if you're prepared to wait, it would seem, though, wouldn't it? That was a big feedback again, isn't it? Face to face with people that their delays, you know, they've ordered and they're waiting another year. It's kind of, yeah, interesting. But what we asked everyone this at the show, Keith, that what was their highlight? What was yours? My highlight was watching you climbing into the big Heimer camper van yeah. and you disappearing. <laughs> Other people see the front of you. I, however, see a completely different side. Nice. <laughs> Like two, two eggs in a hanky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> I did. And what a great uh, motorhome that was as well. We'll be talking it, more about that. We are. We? Indeed. Yeah, the Venture S. It was certainly a highlight of the show for some. Uh, not for everyone, I have to say. Not for me. Oh, shock horror. <gasps> mm. We'll come to back to it, shall we? So what's been happening with your business, the Motorhome Holiday Company? You've got some news for us, haven't you? Yeah, we have an early bird offer. It's brilliant, this. So the team and I came up with the idea that if you book now for next year and pay when you book, uh, which gets you nailed on, as it were, uh, then we'll give you a free weekend away. So there's some terms and conditions, but really simple ones. If we need you to book for a week uh, next year in any of our motorhomes for hire, uh, and you can have a weekend away before it. After it, <laughs> immediately before it, to make your week 10 days. Um, we know how important that week away is. And for many people that hire from us, they've never done it before. And so we thought a weekend away would mean people can get familiar with what to pack, how to use a motorhome, and so on. And uh, and then when it comes to that big week away, that big holiday, which is so important, everything's going to be familiar uh, and, and be of a familiar environment uh, and you'll be able to head off on that holiday feeling at least and believing you know what you're doing so uh, the free weekend offer has been really really successful um, we've only got a limited number to give away um, as we record this I think we've got seven or eight left um, so if you're interested in booking a, a week's motorhome holiday next year then uh, now is the time to do it you can go to motorhomeholidaycompany.com and you can reserve your dates and then when you talk to the team to actually make a payment they will confirm that you have a weekend away you don't need to book the weekend at the same time as booking your main week you can leave that until next year when you have a plan i'll tell you what's been really interesting is the way people have used this offer we've been a bit sort of taken aback people have said can we take the weekend away at the same time so our friends can come that's a nice idea, isn't no, it? It's a lovely idea. Yeah. Some awesome. people have said, can we have it as a voucher? We want to use it as a Christmas present. Good idea. That's a cracking idea. We've done a few of those. Uh, and other people have said, can we extend it and make our week a 10-day holiday? Whereas others have booked a weekend away in the spring. 
um, in maybe in the motor and they're actually going to go in or in something else. You know, they want to try different layouts and this is a great way of doing that. So it's been a fabulous offer. Uh, I've agreed that we'll extend it a bit further, a bit longer, and we'll give away some more. Um, the team are a fantastic team, lots of awards, some super, super Google reviews. Go and check it out, motorhomeholidaycompany.com. And if you're thinking of a motorhome holiday on hire for next year, then this could be the answer. Okay, so get in touch. Mo- Mo- okay, then uh, let's talk about a bit uh, the NEC. It kept on raising its ugly head, and when I talked to a lot of members of the public as well, recorded things for the podcast, uh, they were people. Some of them, anyway, had come along, had already ordered a motorhome, were waiting and waiting and waiting because of the delivery issues, but they just wanted to come along and be surrounded by the whole atmosphere of the of the pastime. Delays. That yeah. was the big theme, wasn't it, of, of, of the show? Yeah. Fantastic, shiny show, but getting your hands on some of these fabulous monsters lots isn't, of, isn't of, the easiest thing, is it? No, lots of supply chain issues still. And to actually meet people and talk to them about their own experience firsthand was was really interesting. Um, lots of people, though, incredibly positive about it. Lots of people buying at the show, uh, talking to dealerships. Um, and their representatives, you know, they had a really good show, a really good week. The feedback is always positive from the show, but genuinely, people were spending money and they were aware they might have to wait a year for that motorhome. And I know since the show, people have come back and are looking and have bought secondhand. Uh, and some of those people have ordered new and are buying a secondhand one for a year or so uh, and may sell it back to the dealer when their new one arrives. So, because yeah. they can sell it back, uh, they're hoping for the same price or a little bit more than they bought it for. It's well, possibly, yeah. But, but there are buyback deals happening where dealers will supply a used motorhome for a, the period they're waiting, might be a year, and they agree a price that they'll buy it back for, subject to mileage and so on. But you know, those that's always been the case, but these deals are more common now. It's interesting. But people are buying. They're at the show. They were putting deposits down. Yeah. And I think a, a lot of the dealers were very happy about that as the show uh, came to an end, weren't they? Because I don't think they were expecting so much of that. But the news no. was all good, wasn't it? A lot, very encouraging indeed, yeah. And I did make a point of speaking to lots of friends of mine, say, you know, off mic, and say, actually, genuinely, how has it been for you? And all were very, very encouraged, very positive, all banging their head on the wall a little bit because, you know, getting new stock is difficult. Um, but interestingly, all talking about used prices staying strong. And we'll come to back to that in a minute. Well, we will. So that's just some of the news. The NEC can't wait for next year. No. <laughs> well, we have, have I told you? We've booked again for next year. Really? But not just October. There's a show in February, the Caravan Camping and Motorhome Show in February at the NEC. We're going there as well. We've got a stand. Are you having a banner? No, it's a, it's a different type of atrium. It's in the older version of the NEC, so we haven't got the ceiling height for a banner. You could have wrapped yourself in it and posed <laughs> like Caesar. we got some other ideas, though. Oh. So we're talking to the organisers right now about how we're going to get motorhome mat everywhere. So it'll be interesting. So watch this space. More news coming. Or listen to this space. <laughs> okay then uh, so uh, if you were at the show and you came up and said hello it was great to see you by the way met lots yeah. of people who listen and watch uh, the podcast and it was absolutely fabulous it was to, great to, to, to meet you and thanks for all the positive feedback usually i mean i've worked in radio stations and I've done all sorts of my time you always get one or two come up and say i think you're rubbish we didn't get any of that. So either yeah. the people who think we're rubbish didn't come to the show, or well, maybe we're not that rubbish. They might have stayed at home. <laughs> they might well have done. All right, it then. was lovely. No, thank you all ever so much. And for all those that asked for a selfie, I loved it. It was great. <laughs> it did. Yeah, bless him. He did. Right then, let's uh, get on with it. What have uh, you been doing then? We're at the show. We're recording loads of stuff. Who did you? Who did you meet? Well, I caught up with Outdoor Revolution. Uh, they have a huge range of products for outdoor living, camping, caravanning, motorhoming, cooking outdoors. And I spoke to Craig Holmes, uh, and we got to sit in a rather lovely air inflated awning. Yeah, so this is a brand new product for 2023. Uh, first launched here at the NEC uh, this year. Uh, it's the Esprit Pro 330, uh, and it's available in three different versions. The 330 the 390, and we even do a drive-away version for the bigger motorhomes. So this is a caravan awning, is that right? This particular one is a caravan awning, yes. Yeah. And by drive-away, it means you can literally leave it standing, unhitch it from the motorhome and head off for the day. 
That's right. So our drive away version of this, yep, you can leave it freestanding and drive off for the day, come back and reattach it. And is it one of those awnings that there's a prize if you can get it back, packed up and back in the bag? <laughs> well, there's no divorce if you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So what else have you got on the stand that people can see if they head on to, to come and see you? So we've got four caravan awnings on display. We've got about nine or ten drive-away awnings. We've got wind brakes on display. Um, and we've got a very popular awning over the, just over the back there, uh, which is the Move Light, and it's been the star of the show, really. That was the lovely Craig. Brilliant new product, that awning. It's really good. So, yeah, check, go and check out Outdoor Revolution. If you're looking for an awning for your caravan, camper van, or motorhome, then some of their new products are superb. But there was lots of new products at the show. And this is all about new products. We caught up with uh, the lovely Paul Cooper. We love Paul. From Moving Intelligence, formerly known as Phantom Trackers. And they have launched a new security device designed not just for motorhomes and caravans, but for trailer tents as well. Uh, one of the products we've got is the MI01, which we are launching at the show. Um, the key feature of this product is the fact that it's battery operated and that it is still factory approved. 94% recovery rate, so we're very, very confident on the product. Even though it's new to the UK market, it's tried and tested in the Netherlands for the last four years. So that was Paul Cooper. What did he call it? The MI01592 stroke. <laughs> It's a bit like James Bond, isn't it? MI01. Yeah. <laughs> it is very good. Very, very good indeed. Go and check it out. We're going to sell them in the shop. So, yeah, keep an eye on that, leisureshop.com, if you're interested in a tracker. Now, you got around the show and you interviewed an awful lot of people, didn't you? I mean, you were there in your blue shirt. And Every day. Being followed around by your troop of orange shirted wombles. <laughs> you included. <laughs> Me included. That did certainly get a lot of attention. Yeah, the crew. Of course, we had, this, we had Jordan on camera, Eric on the mic, the lovely Nicola and Maddie as well, running around, organising us and everyone else. So we were a proper little posse. It was good. And then Jude misses Moto out on the stand. It was excellent, fantastic. And I must say that I actually equaled the world record for the racing a uh, caravan and car around the scale electric track. You did, I yeah. Did, you I, did, I did, I did. Joint first. I was, but I didn't get any prize. That was given to a member of the public, and rightly so. Rubbish. I should, have had that, I should have had that holiday in, Thai, in, in, in Taiwan. <laughs> Taiwan. <laughs> in Thailand. <laughs> okay, then, so you were around, you're doing loads of interviews, and the one that was causing the big stir, all the attraction, uh, was that new Heimer uh, vehicle. Why was it causing such a stir? Well, it's called a Venture S, and it's constructed rather differently to any other motor. It's an all-wheel drive vehicle, so four-wheel drive. And an, an adventure vehicle has become the kind of term. It's you know kind of a new buzzword, really. And lots and lots of motorhomes are being built to go off-road. Is it a bit like Land Rovers doing the school run? You know, the closest to off-road they go is the pavement, yeah. maybe. I don't know. But this had a huge balloon on the top, didn't Well, it? this was the big feature of it. So it's popped top roof, rather than push it up, was blown up, so it inflated. It's not an exploded incident. No, it inflated. It was inflated. <laughs> incredibly warm yeah. uh, and built of bamboo. Um, and, uh, well, you'll love this. It was built by the audio cassette company BASF, or in conjunction with BASF. BASF. Yeah. Chemical oh, company. I used to know what that stood for. I don't know anymore. Don't ask me. Uh, no, I can't remember. Yeah. I can't, but they're, they're known, they're famous for tapes, aren't they? They were. If you're when listening, we used to buy tapes. If you're listening to this of a certain age, you know what we're talking <laughs> Half about. Half the population doesn't know what the hell we're talking Reach about. Reach for yeah. the pencil. <laughs> yeah, when, when we used to record <laughs> things on tape. Yeah, do you remember that? Real to real. Yeah. Blimey. Well, I, I caught up with Heimer's export manager, Andrea, and I started by asking her the price. 230,000. <laughs> Euros? Uh, pounds. Pounds? No. So 230,000 pounds. Uh, it's a really way. high equipment vehicle, so it's a lot of equipment already standard. There's almost no um, optional extras, so it's really a small optional extra. This. We're using a lot of special material in it, a lot of natural material like bamboo and, and, and so on, and that makes the vehicle so special. So this has been a collaboration, hasn't it, between Heimer Mercedes and the chemical company BASF, BASF. Yes, F, correct. Yeah. So, yeah, we um, what 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 was BASF's input? Um, BASF's input was the elastomer cover on the skirt panels and a lot of our inside vehicle material. Yeah. 
and it's all terrain, so it's four wheel it's drive. It's all terrain, it's four wheel drive, and it has a lot of outdoor equipment. And how heavy is it? 4.1. Four, you remember. <laughs> so it's 4.1 tons, You're 230,000 pounds. Yeah. And uh, what's availability? Um, we are now looking at summer 2024. Did she just say summer 2024? She did, yeah. Um, Two, £230,000 and you won't see it until summer 2024. And they might have put their prices up by then. Well, I don't know actually if that was a frozen price. Mm. Maybe it was held. Um, it's been a few years in the in the kind of design and it first featured a huge Motem caravan show in Dusseldorf as an idea. Uh, I think it was back in 2017. And Heimer kept going with it and... There it is, real. Launched this year again in Germany back in August, and it was at the show. You, but they ha apparently sold some. Apparently, I'm not sure. It was a lovely machine. I it must, was, I must admit, even for somebody like me, it was very eye catching. Yeah, I'm not used to motorhome. Very eye catching, and the the inflatable bedroom on the top that that was a great idea. And a real staircase inside, solid steps. That was novel, and the yeah. and the sort of deck on the back, which the, you could do. She demonstrated actually doing yoga on the back. <laughs> I had a go. Doing yoga. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't go well. <laughs> That's something. That that, that <laughs> back flap is something I'd just step off, and yeah. there'd be a splash. In the night, oh, dear, need your back <laughs> flap out of this. That's that's going to get all yeah. the wrong attention on a campsite. <laughs> and because it got BASF, the people who used to make the cassette tapes involvement, yeah. you start it by getting a biro and just twiddling it <laughs> just a little, little bit. So, <laughs> Apparently, they made the sides. So yeah, I I did ask Andrea off mic why, like why. I mean, all, all the people I know that got Heimers, this is generalising a little, I have to say, but most of the folk I know that have got Heimers are kind of my parents' age and, you know, they're that very traditional bus-like vehicle or very traditional motorhome and they are very traditional people. But apparently I, I challenged, you know, really, this is a kind of, this is not true to a Heimer customer and Andrew got quite passionate and I thought I wish I had the mic on but yes apparently on the continent it's, they're flying so people are loving it and Heimer customers are you know great outdoors off-road adventurers and you know need a four-wheel drive mode homemade of bamboo and audio cassettes well it did look fantastic and it, it was did. attracting huge amounts of attention it's got some awards already Good luck to them, and if you've got the £230,000 well, to buy one, even better luck to you. Can I, it did feel a bit like a brand flex. Can I, am I allowed to say that? What's a, I mean, brand, I, what's a brand flex? Well, I love Heimer, but when a brand just kind of does it because they can. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I mean, Heimer are one of the biggest, probably one of the wealthiest motorhome. I mean, they own loads of brands of motorhomes, and they own most of the market. And you know, for them to go off on a almost a dare I say vanity project well I mean you say that but I mean motorhome design tends to be fairly traditional doesn't it very and, and they're breaking that mould and isn't that a good thing oh, absolutely yes and it's no surprise that Heimer would do it I, well though I say that it's not a surprise that Heimer would do it but it's I have to I feel like this product was a bit of a surprise I, I, it feels to me like they're not going to sell very many, not in the UK. So if Heimer offered you one for a couple of weekends, you'd say no? No, of course I'd say yes. <laughs> That's <laughs> the thing. Depends if you're coming. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm saying no. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, so we went from Heimer and ultimate glamour, Yogo on the back flap, and <laughs> then we stopped next time. We went to see Gas Stop. Now this... Gas Stop. The Heimer had all the attention at the show. Mm -hmm. You say to people, what was the best vehicle at the show? There was a Bursner with an inflatable roof that was lovely as well. We didn't get to talk to anyone there. But the Heimer certainly got lots of attention. But the thing for me, and this is my nerdy tendency, was a little valve called Gas Stop. Brilliant. Absolutely genius. And I got to catch up with Matt Howard. He's a director of Gas Stop. I think it's an essential bit of safety equipment. And if you've got a motorhome or caravan, you need to hear this. Here's a snippet from our interview with Gastop. So we're all familiar with the phrase safety first. That's certainly the case here. I'm in Hall 12 with Gastop. Now, if you've got a motorhome or caravan, there's a really important product that I think you need to be aware of. This is a really crucial safety device, relatively new to the UK, but fairly long established in Europe. Now, I'm going to talk to Matt 
here he is. Hi, hi there. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Thank you very Good. much for having me today. You're very welcome. Thanks for talking to us. So, gas stop is a valve. I'm going to be crude here. Yep. That screws into your bottle. That's correct. Yes. And in the event of a gas leak, it will shut, shut up the down. Exactly right. Yeah, you've got it. But it doesn't just shut down the side between the the regulator and the bottle. It actually shuts down the entire system. Is that right? That's entirely correct. Yeah, the entirety of your propane system in your caravan or motorhome. Now that sounds really important to me. Yep. Now you've got a bottle here I do, that you've yeah. reassured me is not full of gas. No, nope, not at the moment. It's full it of compressed, full of compressed air. air. Exactly right, yeah. I'll, um, I'll give you guys a demo if you'd like and uh, hopefully clarify a few things about what gas stop actually does. Go on, tell us. So this is the gas stop here. This is what it looks like off the bottle. It goes directly into your gas cylinder and everything else downstream, your regulator, your hose stays exactly as is, basically. Um, the gas, or in this case, the, pro, uh, the pressurized there goes on and you press down. So this is a reset to open it. Absolutely, what you're effectively doing, if you look behind me slightly awkwardly, there's a ball bearing in the center of this product. And what you're doing there is you're actually equalizing it. So it's hovering in the middle of the product there. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna simulate a major leak by releasing my thumb from this hose. And what that happens, it, it, it basically disrupts the ball bearing and puts it into the off position, like so. So in essence, if you have a major leak, downstream from the gas stop, it shuts off the supply of your propane. Yeah. That's incredible, and that was immediate as well. Absolutely. Just do it again for yeah. us. Yeah, absolutely. So five or six pumps on the gauge like so, and again, I'm gonna release it now, and off she goes, straight away. And that's cut off the entire gas system, correct. and no more gas can escape, and the yeah. bottle is still open. That's correct, yes, exactly right. That's incredible, Matt. <laughs> I can see you're enthralled by that. I think it's genius. Fantastic. It's hard on a podcast if you're listening, but it's a tiny little valve with a tap on the top. Yeah. A round tap with a gauge in it, mm -hmm. and you just lift and drop the tap, you know, pump it up and down. I won't do yeah. that again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry for those on YouTube. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, but you pump this thing up and down. Yes. Like a little plunger. Mm -hmm. And it resets, resets the valve. Yeah. It does. Stop it. This is serious. This is serious. This is good. It might save your life. It would. And that, the, the traditional devices will stop the gas from leaking from the bottle, but they don't stop the gas leaking from the van. If, this, if you have a pinpoint, you know, pinhole leak anywhere in the van, it would just cut the gas off straight away. It's really good. And very clever. And it's also a bit of a level gauge of sorts. Careful, because measuring LPG in a gas bottle is really, really difficult. In fact, it's impossible to be accurate. But this does give a pressure uh, an illustration of how much gas is in the bottle. We should have a Christmas competition. And uh, the prize should be you coming around and measuring somebody's level in their LPG bottle. Very, very hard to do. And it's one of the most popular questions we get at the till. Can I buy a level gauge from my LPG bottle? No. You can't. But this does give you an idea based on pressure. We're going to actually cover the whole interview with Gas Stop because Matt goes on to explain quite a lot more about it. And we'll do that in a future episode. And we will be stocking them at thatledgershop.com. Honestly, if you've got an, any kind of ledger vehicle with a gas bottle on it, does, it could be an exhibition trailer and you've got a fridge in there or something, you definitely should have one of these on it. I actually think manufacturers should be fitting these from factory. They are really really clever and very innovative and not expensive so another fantastic uh, invention as you heard you're going to hear more about it right here on the podcast being serious now it's it's a it's a, a proper safety thing mm. uh, and so uh, we will do more on it uh, and i must stop taking the mickey but we <laughs> will be doing more on new products won't we in, in the coming weeks yeah next week we've got more interviews we we actually did over 40 interviews at the show it's fantastic so a lot of them will go on youtube so you can go and find motorhome out on youtube and watch them there but some of them will feature in the podcast so again next week we're going to pick some of our favourites from, from, the, from the pile that we've got. So keep tuned. Stay tuned. OK, then let's talk about some of the questions that you've been asking us here at the Motorhome Matt podcast. I've got a pile of questions here, Matt. Are you ready? I'm Is ready. your expertise primed and ready to go? <clears throat> Poised and ready. Fantastic. Tony has asked a question of us here at the podcast. He says, I find the weights really confusing specifically the unladen weight determining your speed limit mm -hmm. how do the police or the dvla know your unladen weight is there an online database 
That's a very good question. And you know what? I don't think there is. I mean, obviously, the DVLA know your unladen weight if you've told them um, or the dealer told them when it was first registered. Um, but I'm not sure that that information is easily available to the police. I think they are more interested in the gross weight and how much the vehicle can carry and how much you weigh. And if you look overweight, then they'll take you off to be weighed. And it probably won't be the police that do that. It's more likely to be VOSA, um, one of those motorway patrol guys or girls. And they'll take you off to a weigh bridge and weigh you. And they will be able to tell your gross weight by the plate under the bonnet. Um, and then you know they'll compare that with how much you actually weigh. Um, so that's really the more important thing. But when you own a motorhome, it's really un we know it's important to understand what your unladen weight is, so you know how much you can carry. So that's yeah key. But I don't think there is a database. Okay, Tony, there's no database. But of course, if you know different, let us know. Rick Morris Please. says he has a question. He's hoping you can help him with. He's just bought a 2018 Swift. Besser Car 560. Lovely. It's got a payload maximum weight of three and a half thousand kilograms with a payload of 383 kilograms. Mm -hmm. He says, would I be able to upplate to 3,850 kilograms? What is upplating? So upright. We had so many questions about weight, don't we? Mm. Honestly. Just being personal now. <laughs> we've just yeah. we've been having some sausage rolls we... before recording this. So, and you know. Shh, I'm meant to be on a diet. Uh, it's upplating is raising the gross weight of the vehicle. So how much you can weigh when you're driving down the road. And to do that, you might need to change the suspension, so fit air suspension, possibly change the tires. Uh, you might have to change the brakes. There's all sorts of things that you might have to change to do it. But there's a fundamental criteria that would determine whether or not you can. And that's the actual chassis itself. And the only way to determine that is to get the VIN number. So that's the number. It's printed usually on the windscreen where the tax disc used to go. So if it's a Fiat Ducato, it starts ZFA. Uh, and give that number to a company like SV Tech and speak to the guys there, to Gareth and the team, and they will be able to tell you what you need to do and what weight that vehicle can go to. It's possible um, Citroen, Peugeot, Renault make this really easy with the VIN number, Fiat less so, and it's so they might have some questions of the vehicle um, in order to help you determine what weight it can go to. So I'm presuming that this Swift that uh, Rick's got is on a Fiat Ducato. So I would suggest, Rick, give SV Tech a call, svtech.co.uk. Um, there are other specialists as well, but I know the guys at SV Tech and they're very good uh, and they will be able to help you and advise you and steer you in the right direction. Keith, another Keith, not me, has asked a general question. He says, do you see the higher prices lowering soon, along with, he says, the collapse of the housing market? I think that's a bit mm. wishful thinking. The housing market hasn't collapsed. I only ask because I have money ready, but I hear conflicting stories about the market in the short term. Interest rates went up today. Did you hear that? Yep, they did, to 3%. What's that going to do to the housing market then? Well, I mean, the thing is with the housing market is that people have been buying mortgages with low interest rates and factoring in their payments mm -hmm. based on low interest rates. Uh, and, and So if somebody is buying at the top of the market, which is where we are now, no, yeah. at, at, you know, at, Hopefully. at high prices, um, then they've been borrowing more than they would have borrowed, say, five years ago at a lower interest rate. So any increase in interest rates is going to hit them hard with actual pound, shillings and pence payments. So they could be paying £500,000 more for the same mortgage. So, you know, that's where we are. But should, surely when people were shopping around for their mortgages, uh, maybe they should have gone for a house which wasn't the top of the market, wasn't as much as they could possibly afford and factored in any change in circumstances. And after all, which for most people is a 25-year contract. Yeah, same with motorhomes, though. It's just human nature, isn't it? But that doesn't that mean that Keith's right, though. Isn't the housing market going to collapse? Well, I don't know. You, you know. Let's come back in a year's time, and if it has, you can say, I told you so. But uh, you know, Keith and, and, and you clearly have got a view. I don't think it's going to collapse at all, no. no. It's not going to collapse. You it's might, one to watch. You might, might go down by 10 we're or 15 or, or even 20%. But it's not going to collapse. We're a property podcast all of a sudden. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Different types of homes. Let's keep with motomes. Yeah. So will the prices... Were they lower? I, yeah. Honestly, so, Keith, oh, no. And we're not talking about houses. We're talking about the, the motorhomes. So he's motor basically homes. saying... Uh, are, are the prices going to come down? I don't think so. I genuinely don't think so. We had an interesting chat with 
Wandering Bird and Darren from Urban Motorhome. And they both thought that they would because people were going to be struggling for money and the motorhome on the drive was going to be the first thing to go. And they were of the view that they would just cash it in for whatever they could get for it. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of paraphrasing the whole conversation a bit. And I disagreed and said, I, I don't think that means the market's going to drop. I think there's always a bit of a seasonal trend now. So we are recording this in November 22 and there's always a little bit of a you know a feel that prices are coming down in the winter um demand particularly for family motorhomes in my experience is slower at this time of year um but i don't think it's going to crash not in the way that you know keith feels the housing pro- property market is mm. going to um i think they're going the prices will stay strong demand is still strong we saw that last week we know that's true um it's not as crazy as it was in 2020 that's for sure uh, but the people still are waiting and want to order new motorhomes, can't get them as quick as they'd like. So that pushes them to the used market, which, of course, just props the, the prices up. And remember, of course, you know, if you take a dealer, they've paid, say, £30,000 for that motorhome, which, yeah, perhaps was £25,000 three years ago. And they've paid thirty. So why are they going to sell it for twenty five? they They're not. They're, they're a business. You know, their charity number hasn't come through yet. So, you know, they are going to sell it for... 30,000 plus a margin. Yeah, that's going to be the case. And they're probably going to be sat on that motorhome. They might be until next year. So the prices are going to stay strong. Um, and as a dealer, you, we're very used to buying motorhomes now at the end of the season. And we know that we could well sit on them for six months. So we we kind of keep a, keep on top of the prices. Um, and, and, yeah, and we bear in mind that, yeah, six months is going to pass, but prices can't drop because I can't afford them to. So they, they don't. Yeah, you have to understand, Keith, that you know, when it comes to the price of anything, it's supply and demand, which is the key. If there's demand there, the prices will go up or will be strong. Stay, if yeah. there's no d- demand, then prices uh, will, will go down. And uh, you're talking about the housing market. There's a demand for houses because there's not enough being built. So I don't think they're going to probably go down as much as you think. No. But according to Matt, uh, motorhomes aren't going to be changing in price anytime soon. I think they're going to go up. I think they will go up. And and only because new is thin in supply and the demand is strong. Yes, we'll see more motorhomes coming on the market because there'll be people who say, well, we can't afford to keep this running as well as the house. Um, but, so there'll be a wider choice, but I think prices will go up. There you go. Thanks for the question, Keith. Jane's been on SpeakPipe to us. Hi, Matt. We recently bought a motorhome which found it had damp in it. The People we bought it off said they would repair it, but now they're saying they can't get the parts to repair it. What are our rights with this? Can you help us, please? So Jane has got a motorhome recently purchased. It's got damp in it. They said they repair it, but now they say they can't get the parts. She wants to know where she stands. Yeah, so I had lots of questions for Jane. I actually did go back to her and qualify some of this. So they were a dealer. That was the first question. Who did, who were they? Obviously, if she bought it privately, then the whole buyer beware scenario will play out, and she really has limited rights. Uh, she bought it from a dealer. She didn't have any finance on it. So if she'd had finance on it, then she could have some recourse with the finance company, uh, and they could they could insist that the finances recouped back from the dealer uh, and um, she could return it. So she didn't take any finance. She also, as far as I understood, didn't use a credit card to pay for it. So she had no protection there. So really, this is, Jane, between you and the dealer to to work together to find a solution. Communication is going to be absolutely key. Um, what I didn't get to ask Jane, because it was only a quick email exchange, was whether the vehicle is still fit for purpose. And that's a that's a phrase that gets massively overused. You know, it's not fit for purpose. Well, how was your holiday in Scotland? You know, you've just used it for three weeks. How can it not be fit for purpose? And, you know, is Jane still using it? Um, so I would be, you know, that's an option that you could claim it's not fit for purpose and therefore on those grounds it could be returned. But if, Jane, if you're using it, then obviously it is fit for purpose. It just has some damp in it. But the thing is the Sale of Goods Act, uh, you know, I'm not a barrack room lawyer, but the Sale of Goods Act does offer protection, doesn't it, for yeah. consumers. Uh, for smaller items, they have to be of merchantable quality. quality. Mm-hmm. So is a motorhome with a bit of damp of merchantable quality if they yeah, yeah. haven't raised that issue before she handed the money over yeah that's it and you know there may have to be some professional 
intervention to establish that. The issue that Jane's now facing is that the dealer's saying they can't get the parts to fix it. Now, I can, you know, I quite believe that. Um, it's, it's, that's not uncommon. And, and sometimes, you know, for vehicles that are 10 years old, the parts are no longer available. But there are companies that will make copied parts. We had a, a window in, a, in an auto sleeper motorhome that we'd sold and it cracked and it let water in. Um, and it was an older vehicle. It wasn't. It was only 15 years old, though. And I think we managed to get the last window from Auto Sleepers, who were fantastic with their after sales. I have to say, good shout to them. Um, so thank you. Uh, but there is also a company that would make a copy if we couldn't get that window. So I would say, Jane, it may be worth taking it to a repair specialist and see what they say, and then present that to the dealer and see if you can create a three-way communication where the dealer is helping you get it repaired where they pay for it and you might have to just you know orchestrate the repair but that my my view is always where there's a will there's always a way okay jane well thanks very much and i hope you get that resolved very soon well that's about it for this episode of the motor home matt podcast brought to you with that leisure shop.com anything you want to add then Matt? Well if you've got a question that you want to ask us you can just go to motorhomematt.co.uk forward slash ask Matt we love getting your questions we do endeavour to answer them all often in the podcast and if we don't then I'll come back to you on email or give you a call and have a chat about it and whilst you're on the website motorhomematt.co.uk you can find all the places that you can listen to this podcast and if you are listening on Apple Podcasts please Leave us a review. We love getting them. It really helps the algorithm and helps spread the word that the podcast exists. A five-star review is always very welcome. I'd just like you to have a quick look at the algorithm, <laughs> if you would. I'm not looking at your algorithm. Yeah.